the biggest enemy of success is success. Because a lot of companies, when they're successful already, they stop innovating, they stop experimenting, they stop working hard, they stop doing what made them successful, and that causes them to fail. Next question is, what is one key mindset or principle you always apply in whatever you do? That would be to give glory to God. For me, everything everything is owned by God. Everything is allowed by God. Whether we eat, we drink, or in whatever you do, honestly, whether we become sick or we die, you, you give glory to God in everything because I know He owns everything. So that is one mindset or principle that I have. God gives, God takes away. He's God. All we can do is thank him that he gives first, right? Because he can only take away what he has given. Would you rather that he didn't give you anything? How do you find motivation when times are hard? Well, to be honest, times are hard right now. And it's tough to find motivation, to be honest. It is. I guess what we can do is to listen to people who are able to make things happen right now. No? I think that that is one big way to have some motivation in your life. You know, there's a lot of things to be thankful for. I listened to a podcast recently. I forgot which one. But what that person did to be motivated is to write down 10 things that he or she would be thankful for for that day. And that, that helps. If there are at least 10 things you're grateful for, you're thankful for, for the day, write it down or say it out loud. That helps to motivate you. No matter how down you are, no matter how out you are, out of the count, that helps to motivate. Because you know that there are things that are good in your life. And there are things that you can look forward to in your life. Motivation for me is, is about contentment and gratitude. It's not about heights. It's not about the emotion. It stems from contentment and gratitude. So if you are content, you're thankful, even when times are hard, you can be motivated. Jazz also says, I'm a one-woman show and I know to increase my online business capacity, I have to hire people to do certain tasks. What's your advice on hiring people, especially my production is in my house and it could be dangerous to let people in. All right. It depends on the kind of person you want to hire. The kind of person might that you want to hire might be someone who is um, grassroots. It's hard if you're going to ask the person to go to your house. That's right. So if you don't want that, the obvious answer would be, you have to do the production in another place. It could be in your garage. could be still in your house, but in your garage. Or it could be on a small place somewhere that you rent out. There are numerous options to be able to hire someone who can do the work. But if you don't want to do it in your house, numerous options out there. I suggest you rent a small place. You can do the production there. Hiring is very, how do you say, it? it's, it's very important. That's one of the biggest weaknesses that I had early on. It's still a weakness, I think. I don't think I can hire people well because I have a weakness. And my weakness is I trust people too much. That's also a strength if I hire the right person. But I trust people too much. So when I sit someone down and interview them and try to hire them, what happens is a disaster because whether they're telling the truth or not, I believe them and I trust them. And so how I got to change this was finally I hired people who are in charge of the hiring process. So we have HR personnel who would screen people and plug people in the hiring process. And then I involved some of my team leaders, some of my leadership team members as well. My wife also is in the hiring process because she hires very well. There's a lot of stuff I don't see that she sees. She's a psychology graduate. I think she's an, an honor student, cum laude, I think. She also has very high empathy. And so she makes great hiring decisions. We prolonged our hiring process to six steps. And I'm the last step because people just can't trust me to hire people. I'm really bad at interviewing people. So you can have a hiring process like that because it's hard to just go by your gut. It is hard. You might be right 50% of the time, but if you're wrong 50% of the time, that's disastrous. Even if you're wrong 30% of the time, that can be disastrous for your business. You hire the wrong person, they're going to make a mess. And instead of helping you, they're going to make things worse which means you have to fix problems and still do the work yourself. But you're paying someone to do it. So you see, Pinmona, no, this person has to do it because I'm paying him or her. But they're not doing it well. So you, you 
don't pay yourself, you pay that person. Tapos ikaw pa yung mag-aayos. Tapos gagawin mo rin yung trabaho anyway. That's why the saying that if it's not done correctly, you should do it yourself. Something like that, right? Or if it's not done the way you want, you would rather do it yourself. You know, those sayings come because those people hired the wrong people. Those people hired the wrong team to help them. Because if you hired the right people, they should be helping you out, not asking you to do it yourself. So hiring, very important. I suggest you give it a lot of thought how to make your own hiring process and how you hire the right people. We have a question from Flo. Advice for startup founders. So I'm going to just take your question and put it into the context of where we are today, which is in the midst of a pandemic. My advice for startup founders today, and I'm assuming you you founded a startup because it makes sense. It makes sense to generate revenue during this time of COVID, during this time of pandemic and crisis. The economy needs more entrepreneurs right now. It does. It needs jobs right now. I would argue that you know, start if you're starting up something right now, God bless you. The, the the economy needs you right now. And you just have to keep in mind the basics of starting up a business and running a business, which is cash flow is super important. You have to make sure revenue is greater than expenses. You have to make sure to learn as well the ins and outs of starting up a business, running it, leading a team, managing a team. You've heard this time and again. Entrepreneurship is not for everyone. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of headache. It is a lot of heartache. But the world needs more entrepreneurs. That has been true from time immemorial and that is still true today. The world needs more entrepreneurs. People who are willing to roll the dice, work harder, and just risk everything. You have to do all of these things in a smart way. Have educated guesses, have data, have a fast feedback loop so that you learn what works and what doesn't. You have to test, experiment. You have to have a good network as well or build a good network. So my advice is you have to do all of the hard work. Learn first, learn the ropes, learn your market. Are you really going to make money? Is cash flow going to be good? Because if your expenses is going to be greater than revenue, and especially during this time when cash is hard to come by, when it's hard to make money, when people are losing jobs, I would say, you know, it might not be that great of an idea to start your own business right now. But if you have the numbers, you have some experience, you have something going on for you, you're already making money, I'd say, God bless you, keep on doing that. What is your advice to Philippine entrepreneurs, especially this time of pandemic? It's tough to answer this question because 45% of our workforce is now unemployed. And earlier, I learned that 7,000 more SMEs will file for closure. And when you say SMEs, these are companies with a market cap of 99 million. So, hindi porket SME, maliit na company yan. Because if you have a market cap of 99 million, that can mean you have 100 employees. You have 90 employees. You have 50. I see a hacker is an SME. We have 50 employees. And... It's tough to give advice to entrepreneurs in our country today. And I ran a poll in Startup PH and Phil Chai Business Edition group. And a lot of people answered that they're having a tough time right now and running their business. Times are tougher. It is tough. What we need right now is resilience and hope. But how am I going to turn it into advice? Because that's a very difficult thing. How can you have resilience and hope in the face of uncertainty? How can you tell people it's going to be all right when you don't know what's around the corner? You don't know where you're going. I don't know what's going to happen in a few months. I don't know what's going to happen next year. I don't know if the economy is going to is going to be better. Because honestly, the economy right now is in shambles. So one advice I could give is to really just pray, meditate. If you have a tough time and you're feeling super down, you just write out your feelings on, on a journal. That's what I do. When times are tough, when bad things happen, when sudden things that are unexpected happen, I take my journal and I write it down. And I'm just honest with myself and with God. It helps a lot when you unload your heart and your mind on that paper so that it doesn't squat on your heart, doesn't squat on your mind. It helps helps me to recover, to be honest. So maybe that's one thing that struggling entrepreneurs right now can do. That's, that's one of the things that I could give as an advice is if you're having a tough time right now, just write it down on pen and paper, write it down on a journal. Another question is, how do you keep your feelings from clouding your decision making? Delay your decision. Feelings would 
really get in the way because that's the way we're built. We make decisions based on emotion unless you delay the decision and think about it, have time to think about it. The part of our brain that reacts is a lot faster than the part of our brain that thinks. The part of our brain that feels is a lot faster than the part of our brain that thinks. So if you decide quickly, that usually stems from emotion unless you have had years and years and years of practice in decision-making in that area. That's called mastery. Now you can make decisions, good decisions, in a blink. But unless you have that kind of mastery, you have to delay the decision. Because usually it's your emotion that will dictate the decision and that will lead to a disaster. Same with how you react, right? There's something you don't like, you feel something, usually you react or you counter. And that is something that you know always ends up in a mess. Whether you win or the other person wins, doesn't matter. It ends up in a mess. So what you do is you delay that reaction. Pause, step back, think about it first. Pray about it. We have another question from Jazz. How do you become not just a thinker, but a doer in business? I always have great ideas in my mind, but I sometimes can't seem to do the idea I have in my mind to apply to my online business. You have a lot of ideas, but stays as an idea. That's the problem. Your execution is not that strong. And there are people who are great in ideation, not strong in execution. And there are people man, who are strong in execution, not great in ideation. That's okay. One of the easiest ways that you can do is to get someone who loves to execute, who can work with you. You have a lot of ideas. What you need would be people who can execute. That's why we always say you work as a team. Don't go it alone because you cannot do everything by yourself. I cannot do everything by myself. I cannot code. I cannot program. I cannot build something from the ground up. I can understand code. I might be able to edit it a little bit, but that's it. I can't code. I cannot design. Design is not something that is a strong suit of mine. When I see a design, I know when I like it. When I know when I don't, but creating designs is not my thing. The art side of me would be writing. Other than writing, I don't think I have any more art in me. So you have to get someone, if you're great at ideation, get someone who's great at execution. Because that person who's great at execution will thank you for it. Because... They're probably not that great in ideation. And we always say, anyway, two heads are better than one, right? So if they're also great at ideation and execution, then all the better for you. From April, do you think there's always a downside to success? Because like when you persevere for your dreams, you always have to invest your time. And when you're a parent, you're always going to juggle. And sometimes family is put aside since the reasoning is we work because of them. I do think there's a downside to success. That's why there's a Bible verse. Pride comes before the fall. I don't think you're going to be proud if you're not successful in anything. So there is that downside to success. Also, the biggest enemy of success is success. Because a lot of companies, when they're successful already, they stop innovating, they stop experimenting, they stop working hard, they stop doing what made them successful, and that causes them to fail. So there are a lot of downsides to success. If you're able to study books like Jim Collins's book, How the Mighty Fall, um, you will learn that big companies how they run their business to the ground is because of ego, pride, and because of their success. You put it in context when you said, like when you persevere for your dreams, you always have to invest your time. And when you're a parent, you're always going to juggle. And sometimes family is put aside since the reason is we, we work because of them. Here's something I learned. When you put God first in your life, remember Matthew 6.33, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. When you put God first in your life, I learned that success will follow, however you define success to be. It's true in my life as well. Whenever I don't put God first, whenever I make a decision ahead of God, I don't pray about it, I don't think about uh, what God thinks, it fails. Success does not follow. Failure follows. Heartaches follow. Headaches follow. But whenever I put God first, I pray about it, I ask my wife what she thinks, or I put my family first. Success does follow. It may follow suit a lot later, maybe delayed, may come a year or two later, but success does follow. So juggling between family and business for me is, is a difficult thing, but it's a no-brainer when one push comes to shove. You have to put family first. It's hard for you to keep on telling them that, you know, I'm doing this, this because I love you. I'm doing this because I want to support you, but you lose them along the way because they don't see you anymore. They don't hear from you. You don't spend time with them. It's like the story of the watchman. There's a town who built a bridge and so they hired a watchman. And they said, okay, we have a watchman. Now we need to hire an accountant because how are we going to pay the watchman? 
and they said, okay, now that we have an accountant, we also need a lawyer because how are we going to know if the accountant is doing the right things or maybe he's going to make a mistake. We need the lawyer to check on the accountant. And then suddenly they were running out of funds. And what happened was they needed to, to decide to let someone go. So they let go of the watchman. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense, right? Because you hired the accountant and the lawyer because you hired a watchman. But when push came to shove and you lacked funds, you fired the watchman. <laughs> so having to juggle between family and business is like that. If you're saying that you're doing the business, you're investing so much time and effort for the business because of your family, but your family is losing you, then it doesn't make sense. You have to put your family first. The business will be there. As long as it's generating positive cash flow, revenue is greater than expenses, you're okay. You don't need to sacrifice your family for that. You don't need to put your family on the altar of your business. <laughs>